If I had to pick one thing, one moment that kind of encapsulated all the absolutely amazing things I experienced in the Holy Land, it would have to be the Rock of Agony in the Garden of Gethsemane. Like everybody else, I had an image in my head of what it looked like from all the paintings I'd seen, but it wasn't like any of them. As with so many other Holy Land sites, there's a beautiful Catholic church at the Garden of Gethsemane. And the altar of this Church of All Nations sits right behind the Rock of Agony, which is actually pretty big and flat. And my group celebrated Mass literally kneeling next to the rock. It was crazy. I received the Holy Eucharist and then knelt in prayer with my hand on the very rock where Christ began His Passion. I will never forget it for as long as I live. And while that one was a highlight, those kinds of moments seem to happen around every corner when you're in the Holy Land. And after all, you're walking in the footsteps of Jesus Christ. You're breathing the scented air He breathed and moving through the mysteries of His incredible life. Everyone says it's life-changing, and it is. There is simply nothing like experiencing the exotic beauty and rich vitality of the Holy Land. It's the epicenter of our faith. So much of the story of the human family revolves around Jerusalem and the surrounding area. It's the palette upon which is painted the story of our salvation. And I'd like to invite you to journey there with me on a five-star pilgrimage in March 2021. We're going to travel through Israel in the footsteps of our Lord, visiting the major holy sites in Jerusalem like the Mount of Olives, the Potter Noster Shrine, where Jesus taught the disciples the Lord's Prayer, and the Garden of Gethsemane, where you, too, can experience Mass at the Rock of Agony like I did. We'll pray at the Western Wall, the last remnant of the Jerusalem Temple destroyed by the Romans in 70 AD, and the Upper Room on Mount Zion, where Jesus and the disciples celebrated the Last Supper. Of course, Mary is a huge part of the story, too, so we'll visit the Benedictine Church of the Dormition, where tradition tells us Our Lady fell asleep before being assumed body and soul into heaven. In addition to all the amazing sights in Jerusalem, our itinerary includes Bethlehem, where we'll celebrate Mass in the Grotto of the Nativity, the Jordan River, where Christ was baptized, Caesarea, Nazareth, and Cana, site of the most famous wedding in history and Christ's first miracle. We'll visit Tiberias, take a boat onto the Sea of Galilee, have Mass at the site of the Transfiguration on Mount Tabor, where Christ ever so slightly pulled back the veil of heaven and dazzled the disciples with His divinity. We'll see the Dead Sea Scrolls at Qumran, where the walls fell down at Jericho, and have the opportunity to float on the Dead Sea, the lowest and saltiest place on Earth. Of course, no tour of the Holy Land would be complete without treading the way of the cross, the Via Dolorosa. After praying and meditating on the Stations of the Cross as we move through the Old City, we'll arrive at the most holy site of all, Calvary, the site of the crucifixion. Following the path of our Lord, we'll continue to His tomb before celebrating our glorious salvation in the sacrifice of the Mass at the Church of the Holy Sepulchre, where you'll be able to enter the very tomb of Christ and touch where He laid for three days. Does it get any better? And I didn't even get to everything. The Pool of Bethesda, the home of Mary's parents, Joachim and Anne, the Mount of Beatitudes, where Christ gave His famous Sermon on the Mount. It's all there. Simply put, this trip is the Bible come alive? You know, over the course of centuries, tens of millions of people have made this trip. Some literally risked life and limb to get to the Holy Land. Why? Well, they did it for love, the love of Jesus Christ. They wanted to more fully experience His world. Can you imagine celebrating the sacrifice of the Mass where it all began? We listen to the Gospel in the liturgy, but in the Holy Land, it transforms from words on a page to words in your heart. Trust me, the readings at Mass will never sound the same after you're immersed in the exotic and mysterious world where Christ was born, died, and rose to new life. There is simply no experience that can compare to the Holy Land. And this tour is going to be unlike any other. Normally, when you go on pilgrimage to Israel, you have to change hotels and cities multiple times, and it can get very tiring, especially because you have to get up super early and you're already dealing with jet lag. 
And as we all know, not every hotel is created equal. So I'm not doing any of that. On this tour, we're going to check into one five-star hotel and stay there. We'll still see and experience everything, but we'll do it from the comfort of a five-star hotel and private coaches. My great friends at 206 Tours and I have worked out a fabulous itinerary that includes not only beautiful accommodations in the heart of Jerusalem, but excellent cuisine and the very best guides. Of course, we'll have our very own priest as well. We'll be celebrating private masses at amazing holy sites. And to augment the spiritual dimension of the trip, I'll be giving talks designed to help us integrate all we're experiencing into our interior lives. Because that's what it's all about. What we experience on pilgrimage is meant to transform our lives and make us more like Jesus Christ. And there's no more powerful way to make that happen than by experiencing his world firsthand. So join me for a pilgrimage unlike any other through the Holy Land. Call 206 Tours and ask about Matthew Leonard's trip to the Holy Land or go to pilgrimages.com slash next level for more information. I look forward to experiencing the life-changing world of our Lord with you and other Catholic brothers and sisters from around the world. None of us will ever be the same. God bless you.